Ladies, gentlemen, and all variations thereupon, it is still summer and I want some summer dresses, but I also want to do some historic sewing. So I'm going to try and do some historic dresses that I can still wear every day. And in order to do that, I'm looking towards that ancient civilization, which I think probably was most like as that of ancient Rome. We tend to think of these sorts of dresses as more Grecian today than Roman, but you know, Roman dresses, Grecian dresses, there's a lot of overlap between them. And these dresses that I'm making today are called a tunica, from where we get the word tunic and they were done very much in the Greek style similar to a Greek peplos. They're very easy to make they're essentially just a tube of fabric that they would have pinned at the top. I'm going to be using some buttons although I'll get onto that explain that when we get to it. The material for these is going to be cotton rather than linen which would be more commonly used at the time. Linen would have been the cheaper fabric the rich people probably would have worn silk when they have access to it from the east. I'm going to be using cotton simply because I don't have the linen available and I'm doing this a bit on the wing. So when it comes to the amount of fabric that you want to use, I would say, you, so when it comes to the amount of fabric you want to use, ideally you'd want the dress to go from the top of your shoulder down to your ankle if you're doing it historic. Because I'm doing it with a modern twist, I'm going to be uh, pulling up the length a little bit, just because it's summer and I want a shorter skirt on it. You still want, however, to have a lot of fabric in your dress, and this has two main reasons for it. Firstly, you would want your dress to showcase the amount of cloth that you could afford, so it's a, a display of wealth. It also shows uh, the virtue of the woman because you'd be swinging your own fabric at this point in history and that was seen as a virtuous thing to do. So if you spent a lot of time at your loom spinning and weaving a lot of cloth, then obviously you'd have a lot of cloth in your dresses because you're showing off the fact that you've got all this extra material. You're essentially doing Roman virtue signaling with your dress. And secondly, if you've got a lot of excess fabric on your dress, that allows you to trap a layer of air next to your body, which might sound like it's going to be hot, but it's actually insulating in the sense that it keeps the hot air out from outside and the air next to your body, your body can cool via sweating and things a lot more easily. So having excess fabric, contrary to what you might think, would actually help keep you cool, whereas something skin tight can prevent you from sweating properly and allowing you to overheat a lot more easily. So to make the dress, you take your measured fabric and you fold it almost completely in half. You leave an overhang on the one side, which is about a hand's width, just so that you've got extra draping material on the one side. Then you lay out and cut along that folded edge. Having cut along the folded edge, you then pin both sides together, leaving enough space at the top for armholes. But do take note that you're pinning both raw edges together. So even though there was an overhang on one side, once you've pinned them and sewn them together, then there will be no overhang. And that results in a tube of fabric, which is slightly wider at the front and shorter at the back with an extra bit of drapey fabric at the top. At this point, one thing I should mention is that you're supposed to be pressing all your seams. I, however, I'm not going to be pressing my seams because it's first thing in the morning and as you can probably see from the thermometer, it's already 27 degrees or about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So really, I'm not going to be getting out the iron and making the room even hotter, especially as I'm actually filming this before I get to the point of pressing seams. And by the time I get to the point of pressing seams, it's going to be in the 30s celsius so it's going to be way too hot for me to be pressing seams but if you want yours to look good better than mine probably will be by the end of the day then make sure you press your seams as you go and now for the tricky business of pinning together the areas where you want the buttons i'm going to have four buttons on this and i'm going to be pinning it together so that the raw edge of the back that's the shorter side is pinned to a fold on the front in order to make it more drapey at the front than the back now when it comes to the fastenings of the dress across the shoulders and arms then if you were middle class or upper class then you would have used something called fibulae which are just brooches basically that would have attached the two parts of the fabric together and created an opening between each of the brooch sections wherever it's been pinned and that would have been what middle class and upper class women would have done or at least what they would have done when they were expected to look presentable as in when they're going out of the house and when they're in sculpture and paintings the stuff that we still see today they would have had fibulae pinning it together a working class woman or probably a woman while she's at home and not bothered about looking 100% presentable would just tie up 
the opening so that you can get the two pieces of fabric and tie them together rather than pinning. Because metal is expensive and you don't want to risk breaking your metal if you've got it and if you're poor and you can't afford it anyway you just tie it together and that would have been enough to hold the dress together. What I'm going to do however is I'm going to slightly depart from history and insert buttons. The buttons that I have here are supposed to look like Roman coins even though they're not they are actually just buttons and I'm going to be using those to attack and I'm going to be using those to attach the dress together and I'm not going to be doing it by making buttonholes it's going to be just a case of I'm going to sew both halves of the fabric onto the button which means I'm going to be getting in the dress from the bottom rather than the top but they tend to be quite wide and voluminous anyway now in order to get a shape to the dress you would tie a belt or probably a double belt in Roman cases around the waist in order to accentuate the curve and just sort of show off your figure. You do this primarily by taking the fabric that you've already used for the dress and creating a belt from it just by uh, braiding it. I however am not going to do that because I already have this chain belt with a coin on the end or a fake coin and because that matches the buttons of the dress I'm going to be using this as the belt rather than a fabric belt so again departing from history but making it more modern and there we have it a Roman tunica it's quite light and airy something that can be worn in the hot weather I think and go quite well it would be a lot cooler if it was made of linen but cotton will have to do having all these extra folds in there does trap a layer of air and allow that kind of breathability of the skin as well as uh, giving that kind of you know exotic drapery Roman silhouette and that was a very quick build well I say quick it was quick getting it all together but the hemming of the edges obviously doing it by hand takes forever I only hemmed that half properly this side is just a running stitch hold it down I'm going to finish hemming it later and I haven't even started on the bottom hem yet but the reason I didn't do it all today is because I wanted to do all my sewing in one day and as I was sewing and watching the third episode of The Simpsons, Classic Simpsons, Lisa gets a substitute, best episode of The Simpsons in my opinion. But anyway, I was watching that third episode, started to get a bit tired of it, of the repetitiveness and had the idea of maybe I could make another. I still have some more of these buttons. I've got plenty of material, although none as wide as this. So let's try making something else. And so I made this. So this is virtually the same thing but in blue there are a couple of differences firstly it doesn't go down the arm I haven't put any of the sleeves on which is something that Romans would have had at certain points in history although the dresses that the Romans would have worn with the just shoulder straps and no sleeves would have been called a stola and that would have been worn over the top of another dress it would sort of be the equivalent of the toga that men wore and it could only be worn by a married woman I'm not married so I wouldn't be allowed to wear it so I've done it as a separate dress using the same belt and just pinning at the shoulders. What I have done on this is put the addition of a chain from the two buttons just to uh, follow the drapery going down and there is a little bit less drapery on this so it's not as backy and voluminous at the front and I think this dress is more of the sort that you would wear out every day in modern times. The other dress I think is good enough to be able to wear out but I think I might need to adjust the um, the amount of volume and the upper levels you just take quite a bit of finagling to sit right and look good which the Romans are famous for all this impractical clothing the toga for example Roman men absolutely didn't want to wear they had to pass laws to make people wear them because they were so cumbersome and just so yeah two dresses in a day this one hasn't been hemmed at all so I've got a lot of work ahead of me in order to neaten this up and make it so I don't have all these rough ragged edges at the side and I quite like this at the side You'll notice at the edges where it's been cut, it's all rough and ragged. But once I've hemmed that up, you'll have this little extra bit of uh, fabric just being more drapery and voluminous just at the side. So it's not a sleeve, but it's got the hint of a sleeve. And I think that's quite a good look just at the edge of the dress. So overall, I think this dress and the other one has turned out quite well. And I'm very pleased with the whole project. If you want to see more of what I've done on historical sewing then up here is a playlist of all the historic sewing costumes that I've done and down here is a video that's been picked out by the algorithm just for you and if you click up here you can subscribe to the channel. Now if you don't mind I'm going to go sit in my underwear and just hug a bag of ice because I am absolutely melting.